Cutting out parts with an arc light dynamics table is a three-step process. First, you will create a part. Next, you will nest the part. And lastly, cut the part. To create a part, there are two programs, Inkscape and QCAD. Inkscape is very useful for creating signage. QCAD works well at creating mechanical parts. After a part is created in either of these two programs, you will need to save the image as a DXF file. The second step of the process is to open the DXF file in SheetCam, create an operation, and post-process the file to create G-code, which is an NGC file. Lastly, that NGC file is moved into the plasma profile of Command CNC to cut the part. Located on the desktop is a helpful guide titled Steps to Cutting Apart. This will take you through the workflow process step by step. You can keep this form minimized at the top of the screen for quick reference. We are going to create a mechanical part. Open QCAD for the first step of this process. QCAD is now open. The scale of QCAD is listed in the top and left bar. To move around the QCAD sheet, simply push down on the wheel of the mouse and drag. The origin point, 0, 0 of the scale is depicted as crosshairs. You don't necessarily need to draw here. You can draw anywhere in QCAD. To change your scaling, zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. Listed on the left hand side of the screen are the tools. Under each tool, there is a drop-down to access more options for that tool. We are going to start our drawing with a horizontal line. Click on the horizontal line tool. Enter the length of the line. We want this at 1.5 inches. Left-click to place the horizontal line. After we've placed our horizontal line, Move up the tool tree to select the vertical line tool. Use the snaps to snap to the end of the horizontal line. Next we want to place another horizontal line. Move back up the tree and select the horizontal line tool. Notice QCAD is saving the length from the previous selection. It is important to use the snaps to place the horizontal line directly at the end of the vertical line. Next we need to make an arc. Move up the tree to find the arc tool. We are going to create an arc by two points. Snap to the intersection of the two lines. The arc comes off tangent to the line. Left click to place the arc. Lastly, move back up the tree to find the circle tool. This is for a hole in our bracket. Enter the diameter of the hole. Notice the tool is snapping to the middle of the line. Left click to place the circle, right click when finished. Next, we want to delete the reference line. Click on the arrow tool in the top left. Left click on the line. When selected, the line will have two nodes. Simply push the delete key on the keyboard. The line is gone. We will be cutting this out of quarter inch steel. It is important to remember when cutting with plasma, holes will be slightly tapered. To accommodate for the taper, the hole size can be slightly increased. Click on the circle. In the property editor, we can see the diameter of the circle is 0.375 inches. Let's change that to 0.4 to accommodate for the taper of the plasma stream.
the hole is now upsized to allow for a bolt to easily pass through. Next we need to save our part. Go up to the File tab, drop down to Save As. We are going to save this as a DXF file. Be mindful of the location you are saving this to. We are saving this onto the desktop. Name the part. I'll call this the Control Cabinet Pivot Tab. Click Save when finished. We saved the file to the desktop. You can see the icon here. Double click on SheetCam to open up the program. After the part is created, you need to open it in SheetCam. Go to the File tab, drop down to New Part, and navigate to the part on the desktop or to the saved location. Click on the part to select it, then click Open. Your scaling should be in inches in the drawing position in the lower left corner. Click OK. Our part has now been brought into SheCam. Now is a good time to double check the drawing. A red line indicates an outside cut, which means the cut for the plasma flame will be on the outside of this line. A yellow line is an inside cut. The kerf of the plasma flame will be on the inside of this cut. A white line indicates the plasma cut will be directly on top of the line. You'll have to watch out for this because it can affect the dimensionality of your part. The kerf will move inside of your part slightly and outside of your part slightly, thus reducing the overall dimension of the part. This part looks good. The next step is to create an operation for this part. Click on the Operation tab, drop down to Plasma Cut. Select Outside Offset because we want the curve to be on the outside of the part. Layer. This needs to match the layer located on the left-hand side of the screen. This layer is the default layer. Tool. We are going to be cutting this out of quarter-inch steel, so I'm looking for the 65-amp quarter-inch steel tool. Depending on how fast we'd like to cut the part determines the amperage of the nozzle. The slowest we could cut quarter-inch steel with would be a 45-amp nozzle. This would give us the best cut quality. If we were looking for faster production speeds, we can select a 65 amp nozzle. This automatically populates the feed rate. Next we'll create a lead-in. We'll do a tangent lead-in of 0.15 inches and a small arc lead-out. Click OK. You can now see the curve around the part. The torch will start here. This is a transition move. It pierces in the center of the hole, cuts in a counterclockwise direction, picks up, moves to the outside of the part, then cuts in a clockwise direction, back to the start point. Ideally, you want to move your pierce points or start points to a corner. Otherwise, you will see a small divot here on this part. To do this, go to Mode, Edit Start Points, and now anywhere you click on this contour, it will move that start point. The next step is to post process the file, creating G code. To do this, you can either click on the green icon or go up to File, then drop down to Run Post Processor. I'm going to save this to the desktop. 
we are creating G code, an NGC file. Post processing has been completed. Just click OK on this window. I like to minimize SheCam to the top of the screen just in case I need to make any changes after I cut. From SheCam, you create G code or an NGC file which gets moved into the plasma profile of command CNC for cutting your part out. The plasma profile of command CNC is now open. Click on the e-stop active icon in the lower left hand corner with the mouse. The motor power needs to be on on the face of the controller and the e-stop button on the left side of the cabinet needs to be in the out position in order for this button to change color. You will now be able to move the gantry with the arrow keys on the keyboard. To move the Z axis up and down, use the page up and page down keys. The next step is to set up machine home. Make sure the torch is positioned high enough to clear the gussets at the front left corner of the table. This is usually about three inches off the top of the slats. Click home X and home Y. Both these can be active at the same time. The torch will move to the front of the table and to the far left corner. After the torch moves to the Y and X axis home position, 0X and 0Y to establish machine home. Next, using the shift and arrow key, jog the torch back over the top of the material. When using shift and the arrow keys at the same time, that moves the torch at full speed jog. Move the torch over the top of the material being cut. Click Home Z. Homing the table only needs to be done when first opening Command CNC at the beginning of the day. This sets up soft limits of the table and squares the gantry. Click the Open tab and navigate to the cut file created by SheetCam. It will be an NGC file. We save this file to the desktop. You will now see your part in the table display window. The G code will be listed on the left side of the screen. Move the torch to the lower left hand corner of where you would like to start the cut. Come in an eighth of an inch of the edge to allow for room for lead ins and not to cut off the plate. Set your part origin by clicking 0x, 0y, and 0z. Notice the crosshairs are now at the lower left corner of the part. Double check lines 10 and 11 of the G code to make sure the tool selected in SheCam matches the nozzle size in the torch and the amperage set on the front of the hypotherm. If you have the Arc Sync technology accessory, the amperage will be sent to the front of the hypotherm when you click Run. Click Run. Command CNC will load the preset voltage and amperage from the G code. Next, click Resume. The torch will move to its first pierce point and start cutting. After it's finished cutting, the air flows through the torch to cool the electrode for 10 seconds. At that point, the air will shut off. 
I normally like to move the torch above a piece of metal to stop the splashing of water. That is how you create a part from start to finish. There are more comprehensive and detailed videos about sheet cam and command CNC on our website and in the instructional videos folder located on the desktop of the computer. Thank you for watching our demonstration of the workflow process video. Enjoy your Arclight Dynamics CNC plasma cutting table.